Hello and welcome to uh, another Friday, another show here at uh, thepuppet.com. But uh, like you know, I always come and do some rugby shows. But today it's a bit different. Today I have one of the greatest athletes in Sri Lanka. Uh, he was a three-time Olympian, numerous South Asian Games gold medals, and he is considered to be a legendary swimmer here in the country. Uh, none other than Mr. Julian Bowling. Hello, Mr. Julian. How are you? How is quarantine treating you? Lancha, good to be in your show. Oh, I love the intro music, man. It's a nice beat song. I know, cracks you up. I was dancing all the way. This, uh, I didn't see myself on the screen, so I'm also like, <laughs> uh, I'll be here <laughs> now. Um, yeah, look, quarantine. You and I are locked down, but this is nice, huh? That we can uh, bring in the electronic age and. Make good use of it. So fantastic to Papade, you guys. What y'all are doing? This is it, man. No barriers for y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Julian. So, right off, start off. Uh, let's talk about what got you into swimming. Let's go back down the memory lane into your childhood. So, first okay. of all, I want to ask you, how was it growing up with a superstar mother and two brothers? Must have been a very busy household. Yeah. Well, obviously, I mean, I was just. A little by that is my mom, sweet, sweet she is. Um, she was a great swimmer. Um, for my mother's side, her father captain Sri Lanka in cricket. So sport has been obviously through all the generations of my mother's side, which are the Desirams. My dad, interestingly, he went to St Joseph's, uh, quite close to uh, next door to your school, uh, Lantra. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he played cricket there, he, you know, and he represented St Joseph's. But then he became a tea planter. Back in the days, that was like the the in thing for a lot of people to, uh, uh, you know, take on that career. So he went into rugby, and Dad always they, he said he played for all the upcountry teams. Uh, and once one of those years, they even came into the Clifford Cup, the knockout uh, finals, and they lost to Sia. And there are some photographs that I've seen where Dad and a few other locals were a minority. They were all English people or planters from Europe. So. Yeah, there was always sport in the family. Um, so, but it was not that we have any accolades put on walls or anything like that. So that you know, we were never under pressure to perform. You know, and then and when I look back at the entire career, I just look back and say, you know what, I enjoyed every single day. Even okay, we go through ups and downs in sport, but it wasn't. I didn't do sport because I had ambitions. I did sport because I just love hanging out with uh, fellow peers and training together and going for competitions, whether it's at school level and then laterally at university. So never a pressure. Good stories. There are some stories where you know when it came to crunch time. You know, where I had to perform, and mom and dad would never put any pressure. My two elder brothers, I was the bada pizza, uh, number three. Yeah, so I mean, they went into the sport of swimming before me. I had actually said no to the sport of swimming, Lantra, and uh, I just some reason I didn't like it. And uh, my mother was a swimming coach as well, but no pressure was put in in saying, you know, why don't you also go and swim? So I just. Uh, right. Um, was messing around in life a lot and just wanting to, you know, <laughs> yeah, be an easy going thing. guy. And <laughs> so, yeah, that's easy, easy, easy beginnings. Never under pressure to perform from a family's point of view. That's that's brilliant. Uh, so you just spoke about your family background and how you are coming from a really good sporting family, but the question still lies for the fans. Who I request anybody if you're watching live, you can comment uh, and ask any question you want. Uh, Julian Bowling is a great legend, the stream of Pinaga. So don't forget, it can be any type of question. Even if you want to ask him about how he keeps his good looks, uh, being at the young age he is, <laughs> you can uh, ask anything from Mr. Julian Bowling. He's uh, ready to answer. So on that note, uh, I just have to get this off my chest. I would be love. I would love to be locked down in your place. Look at that wonderful swimming pool at the back. Brilliant! <laughs> I love and, that. Uh, That's my uh, playground. I know. I know. Anyway, so as a kid, were you the mischievous kind of kid or the more academical, you know, bookworm kind of kid? Well, when you have six Fs in your third third, third term exam before your O levels, 
I don't think much <laughs> academics were in our lives. There you that go, was one big miracle. Kid. Yeah, my two brothers, uh, Jeremy and David, wonderful guys. Um, sadly, I lost both of them last year. It was a massive blow, but uh, life is such, you know, we got to sail on. And uh, yeah, so those are the, you know, that was our swimming pool. That was a river, that photograph. Dad would always take us, mom and dad, to places that were, you can't afford a hotel pool, so let's get into a river. It's actually <laughs> even better. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we are a fun-loving family. So, but then you said that you didn't choose swimming and you didn't like swimming at the start. But why did you get into it in the end? What got you into it? Okay. This much, you know, those are a few things, Lanta, that all of us will remember those few moments in life. And this is one moment yeah. I will still remember. Mom, mom sort of would have thought, you know, how do I try and get this fellow into the sport? But I know mom doesn't get stressed out over it. But he said, look, all your friends who are at Royal, um, who are in the team, my, my classmates, batchmates, they were all bigger than me. I was this puny, small... You know, I was way smaller than them in size-wise. So, he said, look, if you start swimming, you might also put on some size. And I caught the bait. Uh, and I, <laughs> I jumped go, in. You uh, don't, there, there is you don't uh, Oh, gosh. <laughs> these are... Well, this this is like we are now, you know, into A levels. Or maybe O levels or first year A levels. So, this is different. This is latterly, there was a bit of, uh, you know, oh, oh. thankfully, I grew up, grew a little. But... Yeah, smaller days, I was, uh, you know, that that was, gosh, Ratika and I, fantastic. Where do you get these pictures from? I love it. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, has, so, some dedicated <laughs> diggers to find this stuff. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, I'm going to catch all of that person. Um, but, yeah, so I went in thinking I'm going to actually put on some size. And that didn't happen for a long time. And uh, I still remember when I was 16 years old. Lanta, now you being a rugby player will know. I was 112 pounds. That's less than 50 kilos. Yeah. Less than we were in pounds, no, those days. I remember 106. Yeah. You know, uh, sorry, sorry. When I was 16 years old, I was 112 pounds, five, eight in height. Now you can imagine how thin I was. So yeah. finally managed to put on some weight, and now a little more than what I want. <laughs> That's okay. That's that. You're still looking very fabulous, and I think uh, right after seeing your pictures when you were young, there will be a lot of uh, uh, ladies I think coming to comment. So let's talk about your school life uh, a bit uh, more, <laughs> Julian. Focus, please. <laughs> we can talk yes, about your yes, school yes, life. Yes, yes, yes. We can talk about your school life a bit more. How competitive was uh, the swimming in that time, in your time? Within the school. Well, you know, like when I, when I, when I joined Royal College uh, with the swimming team. Sorry, I was part of Royal through, you know, Royal Junior School first years. That's a different school to Royal College back in the days. And <laughs> uh, I, I even struggled to get into our relay team in our age group. Now, was, if there was a B team, I probably wouldn't have got into it. But there was always only an A team because we had such good swimmers. And those are the boys: Lalindra, Pial, whether it's the Brahm, the Ross Twins, Brahm. Jayanta, Praveer, Kriyon, all of these guys are so good. And the, the the fact that I was accepted into the team, even though I was nobody, was the beauty. And that's probably the reason why I stayed in the sport, is the fact that I had good friends. Uh, but we were very competitive. But believe it or not, then I know each of those eras, you had Royal and St. Thomas's competing, or could be St. Thomas's and St. Joseph's, you see people you know before us talking about those their times of what the what the competition was like but you know in our time the the biggest competition came from Ambalangoda and uh, it was Dharma Soka and Devananda they all swam together as a club called the Dolphin Aquatics and I remember yeah. they used to come for nationals as one team oh gosh they were so strong they were our friends you know over the weekends we used to go hang out with them and uh, so this competition was where it was between Dolphin Aquatics and, uh, believe it or not, uh, Royal. And a uh, couple of those nationals, I remember us um, coming second to them. Nothing wrong in coming second, but uh, yes. 
but there were boys who were swimming in the river mind you so not a lot to boast if you do win <laughs> Uh, we could be privileged <laughs> yeah. enough to have a pool uh but you know the mem till today i'm best of friends with a lot of those guys and uh, some of them are in the sport as coaches even now so yeah dolphin aquatics man i uh, my hat i take my hat off. i won't take my hat off now because yeah, <laughs> that's okay. i need the barber uh soon as the lockdown is taken out i'm going to look for that closest barber <laughs> um yeah so great job those boys from mambalangada uh, from the river and they used to give us a good run for the money and even at times swam faster than us right so we have your first question from uh, tracy okay hi sir apart from swimming can one add other sports as well into their daily schedule tracy just main wants to know i Yeah Tracy good question obviously uh um, this is a crazy thing uh now we have a situation where a lot of people are quitting sport the fact young children even in america tracy you see a lot of people they say 70% of the children at age before they turn 13 they're stopping sport and the fact is that they go after this one sport and become so competitive that there is no room for everyone and what they recommend now especially at a young age is to do multi sports and i think the the what we should do as adults is ask children what they want and then you will have a child who says you know what i want to play hockey and play badminton and be part of the school team well we as coaches and parents then must love them so it's not a, i'm sure you can but in case you want to specialize and try and perform at the highest level then you got to understand you might not be that you know have the privilege of doing multi sports per se uh there might be exceptions to the rule but question is then when you train at a higher level you have you need your body needs rest as much as you put in the training if you don't get the rest then you can't um, sort of uh, progress and try and achieve those targets that you would like to so multi sports i love that um why not so it's it's all about a child's choice and and i think we adults should be able to uh, help them the problem is sometimes we adults really? trying to get those results from the child for us the mom, mother father coach ah oh, stay in this sport this is a good sport this is where you know no it's all about asking children what they want and you know what we be there for them right brilliant i hope that answers uh, your question you see All right, so Julian, we spoke about the younger dashing bowling Ju- uh, Julian. Now let's move on to what happened right after school. Uh you joined the club, you went into national. So, so tell us that story. I mean, obviously, uh I had an opportunity when I was 9 grade 9. This year grade 10 is our level, so I had a chance of going to Australia and training for a year. But obviously I didn't, you know, the academic situation didn't work at all well so i came back after one year um struggled in australia a little bit but i did have some improvements um and then i repeated year 9 so not uh and that was that so got through all levels and then came the a levels i was finding it difficult to sort of fit in and then i opted out of school and then hung around and it was the 1986 asian games i think where i kind of did all right uh, i final which is kind of quite happy <laughs> because the previous asian games also i had finals and uh but those times i achieved um my coach in hawaii john prince dr john prince a sri lankan proud royalist um he said julian your times might be good enough for you to now apply for a scholarship in the us I had never dreamt of anything leave alone studies he has he has a chance to go to america and uh, pursue something <laughs> so i did you know back in the days you write letters you don't send emails anything so yeah. i wrote to the top 10 universities in division 2 there are different layers so division 2 is where i thought i'd fit in best and i got some scholarships and i took on the school that gave me the uh, you know the biggest scholarship and that was a uh, top university i enjoyed it four years at the clarion university of uh, pennsylvania yep so spent four right. years uh, at university but i went with a massive expectation that i will improve my swimming and take it to another level 
but believe it or not those four years were the most challenging for me because my swimming from where i was and i was thinking of going beyond that about you know i just went and you know how you fall off a cliff uh, lamcha that was like me yeah. falling off a cliff my standard just dropped plummeted and i struggled for four years and i thankfully i didn't give the sport up my coaches my teammates were very supportive of me but when i look back and i know the reason why i didn't perform one key reason because i wanted to perform and i wanted to train hard was the fact that i didn't have enough money to uh, eat well uh, i remember my mother right. used to send me 15 dollars 15 dollars a week to find food so which i right. i averaged that to 2 dollars a day and looking for food <laughs> so i think that caused a big problem and obviously nutrition is a big thing in sport and but here yeah. i was going through challenges and massive challenges and then then came this infamous famous south asian games in colombo you know you end up winning some medals but that all happened after <laughs> this my uni uh, yeah. look, you say, or or you say like it's something small it's a pretty big achievement julian <laughs> well it went live on television and you know obviously sri lanka had put a lot of effort to host the games Uh, okay so the results came and uh, but you know lantran i don't know many people know this two weeks before maybe at least i was struggling so much yeah. in the sport and i was under so much pressure to perform that i told my mother mom i'm done with this she's my coach right and i said i don't want to swim the yeah. south games and here's a lady who gave everything to me uh, said you know what no problem you just inform them that you're not swimming and to me that that moment is way better than any other medal winning performance the fact that you got a parent uh so i just lost my dad 6 6 months before that um said that's it so no pressure so that original question of you know family being you know superstars yeah. or what not in sport we were never under pressure to perform but thankfully the authorities uh, when i actually i quit the team and then the authorities came home and they said no no you know sri lanka wants you and you have to <laughs> perform right. so i did go for it and i'm glad they came and believe it or not even okay. though i won those medals lantra the beauty is that after 6 years um since yeah. that asian games i talked to you about i swam my best times after 6 years so i just went plummet and then i was able to come up to where i was and actually swim faster than my previous times which i swam you know 6 years ago before Brilliant. that and that Brilliant. actually brought a tear to my eye because my mother knew that story i knew that story nobody else knew that story i don't think my brothers knew it. and now and, and now you know, everybody knows it <laughs> yeah thanks to papa uh, thanks to you but <laughs> no yeah I, i i think the lesson learned there is that if i didn't enjoy what i did and if i didn't enjoy the fact that i hung out with boys and girls in our sport uh, you know and go for your day to day training i would not have done this sport um and that's the reason i stayed on and you know those stories of medals are one thing Brilliant. but the journey is the journey is way more important right uh, we have some questions coming and lo- loads of questions uh, julian uh, let's start off with riyaz no, no, amanullah no. Thank you for the memory. Uh, thank you for the memorable South Games in 1991 with uh, Deepika. So it was history. Talk us through that incident. Well, I remember I we were all given a pair of goggles from uh, Ray Zulava, who was a coach who came from Australia and coached us. And right. you know these goggles. That's the only one I had, and mine started to leak. Uh, so I had to actually borrow Deepika's goggles every time I went to race. and then <laughs> quickly bring it back just in case she was racing after that said so dipika here here's a goggle mm-hmm. ah great lady and she was under pressure to perform as well i think i remember and uh, she did a fantastic job but yeah so dipsy and she's back in the states but um, yeah, it was good to uh, race with her and uh, be in the same team and oh okay, the funny thing we talked about weight So right, when yeah. I was in America at university, for my fourth year, I'm senior. My senior year, I'm actually a little older than the senior most swimmer by a couple of years, and I was the lightest 
at 152 pounds. Now 112 has become 152. You think you're big, but I was the lightest <laughs> in that team. Yeah. But when I came to Sri Lanka, I was the heaviest. I know that's that's. In our team. I don't know if that's. A, I don't know if that's a, you know, blessing in these guys. You know, we Asians are not. It's wrong. It's something wrong in our genes, Julia. That way we go we, uh, look, we are we are one of the we smallest we are one of the small exactly we are the smallest pound for pound uh, maybe a couple of other races around the world but generally but again it's our eating habits i think the matter yeah, uh, but but i until dipika came in and then she was 155 pounds then i wasn't the heaviest so dipika was the heaviest i was the second heaviest the rest were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have another Compliment for you from uh, Maya Virasinghe. Grateful to Julian sir for all he taught me in and out of the pool. I'd be nowhere without him. That's Maya Virasinghe showing her your gratitude. Maya, hi buddy. Well, here's a girl who wants to now come and coach and help kids. So that that when someone says I want to hang out and help other kids when I can, then you think you might have had had a influence on on a certain person and uh, maya is a great kid she had a personal challenges in life i remember who is not without challenges ah maya but uh, yeah yeah just the fact that you know we journey together and uh, when when a child goes through situation and they they share it with you and you try to journey with them um it makes a sport even more special True, that's hundred percent true. So we have another question from my colleague Lelu Mahakumar. Between Julian's time and now, why don't we have swimmers who can compete at the Olympic level? Where have we gone wrong? Julian, straight away question well, off the bat. Simple. I mean, you now you have people like Matthew, Abhisinga brothers, um, Akalanka or Cheranth, the Kimiko or the Rahim sisters, the entire group. You know, we we produce swimmers are way faster than what I swam, and um, but I still think the problem in Sri Lanka is that we don't have a planned system. And if I may say, if you want to have results and compete at the Olympics and win a medal, we need not two dozen. We need a hundred Matthews, and then we might produce a medalist. So Sri Lanka, the biggest problem, if I can just quickly say this, for all of you all to think. If we create sports to be like the A-level exam, if you look at the A-level exam, the dates are fixed. Well, this time with the <laughs> lockdown, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, there is there is transparency because no minister can put their child into campus, and there are rewards. And see what happens is when you create the platform, we compete. Now in America, there is no minister of, for sport. the system is in order the next 4 years the calendar is set calendar is set the incentives are set and transparency last year we had a swimmer who was selected to the world to go to the world champs and corrupt associations and to be honest even the olympic committee I'll be very frank they cheated and the other girl went to court and won the case and the judge said look uh you know things have to change so look we are so not transparent we are so not planned and we don't have any incentive come soft games but we had recently suddenly they put a team together they take them to the hilton and have a dinner and bring a guy to motivate them who talks for an hour and how you motivate someone like that and yeah. suddenly you expect results so if you bring in the whole level system you know what calendar transparency and the third one is rewards true true we will perform and we, you know you you want matthews not one matthew one i i spoke to darshan sriyani in the athletics world i said if you bring this system and that doesn't cost any money because to plan it doesn't cost you any money true um we will have loads of darshas and damayantis and matthews and sukhati lagaratnas and name the lot you know 100% true. I think it's planning and execution that matters the most. And uh, Hari, Julian, we have another we we have another question that's uh, about the 90 1991 SAG games. Inshaf Kafur says uh, some of us were unable to see the 1991 SAG games. Talk us through that. You must have loads of memories there well, as well. Couple of good ones. Um, or a couple of them I can't even share. 
uh, <laughs> I love to but not public. I was <laughs> a naughty boy. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was misbehaving a lot and uh, uh, but yeah, it's all about having fun but you're very serious about the competition. Um Yeah, the fact that I think because I was training abroad, I didn't know what Sri Lanka was up to but for 2 years Sri Lanka had planned for this event and that's why we had such good results of 40 medals or something out of 10 sports you know women's uh, volleyball team beating india men's volleyball team winning silver track and field being in loads of medals and the other few sports we had only 10 disciplines um yeah and uh, oh gosh uh, you know i remember okay i'll give you a not a prank but something bad with it uh, so we were at the galadari hotel i went so over Uh, and then the staff for games was no so we were allowed to stay in the hotel and that's no fun because you are staying in a five star hotel no events having a good time and in the night we went and uh, they displayed the official flags the seven flags of the staff countries and we uh, swimmers boys went and uh, lifted all seven flags i don't know who took it home, <laughs> but uh, i don't have one we we did things like that um uh There was a time when I think there was an issue when the minister tried to put a put a swimmer into the team, and um, I was I was like the senior most. Um, I was old. I was 26 years old then. But don't start calculating my age now. Yeah, um, but, I, I I I know it all. Uh, <laughs> the 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 majority of uh, the swimmers were school kids, and they all said, you know what? If the minister brings this athlete into the team, we are all going to quit. I didn't coax them into it. So we are a united bunch of uh, guys um and I'm glad the, the relay team that we won we beat India for the very first time in the history of swimming uh in a relay and uh, the fact that we had we are talking about Ambalangoda boys training in the river we had uh, Pradeep uh, Idrisinga from Panduru so I mean the Panduru river who was part of our relay team and then we beat India so you know that adds icing to the cake type of thing a uh, bigger reason to celebrate when you have you know kids like that coming from such backgrounds to uh, which clearly shows you know you, you don't you not nothing should deter you from going after your target and here's a boy who came from the river so I'm for us we all share the uh, the glory together brilliant 100% true Anyway, now we spoke about your early days. We spoke about you and your accomplishments and achievements at Sag. Now let's talk about how uh, I think I remember you receiving an award from uh, the army. This one, yeah. yeah. Recently. In recognition of dedication, oh, commitment, and contribution, Sri Lankan Army through school. Ah, uh, you know, Julian Bowling. Yeah, and the 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 commander of the army. It was at the uh, army para. See. It's a sad story that we had the war for so many uh, decades um and so many soldiers uh were, 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 were lost their well, lives for sure that that's just like they gave their life for our, for us to live but those who survived and um lost their limbs uh so actually it was when we were training at the army my father was the first to um, go to the army hospital and bring the soldiers out and exercise with them and he and his friends started the first army disable games uh, back in the late 80s i think 89 90 somewhere there um and latterly so we were my mother also then became very involved with the army uh, because we were based at the army as a swimming team at golface uh, where the headquarters was through the war years was an easy time but uh, it was great to be at the army so you used hang out with the, the the soldiers but um, we were very influential uh, my mother especially in helping bring sport to the para para that's a dis- you know differently able athletes and so i know this award was for what i did because i took this one guy kvc priyadarshan a sergeant to the paralympics where he took him on fourth at the paralympics um but that trophy was really for my mother and father uh, i i was i i again one of those moments where you have those silent tears uh, the fact that they were not there that should have it is for them thanks for sharing that uh, i don't know if you knew the background <laughs> to it but thanks 
I just I just feel the compassion when you speak uh, Julian it's pretty amazing uh anyway coming back uh, to the swimming pool tell us about the first time how, how did you feel when you first got that sri lankan swimming cap and you first got the opportunity to represent your country how big was that moment for you well it happened this way where it was by default we were doing the local scene swimming our local meets the local age groups 1977 the sri lankan age group the indian uh, age group team came to sri lanka and swam in our meet and we were awakened to a rude shock they swam circles around us we were like ah oh, there is something more to swimming than in sri lanka so the indians actually um, they 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 invited us to swim the indian age groups in 1978 in bombay uh, what's it called now maharashtra no chennai no chennai is madras bombay is uh, no, mumbai mumbai no no so yeah, bombay Bom- mumbai mumbai so it was there and uh, 20 of us age groupers i was only 12 years old um and i wasn't the i wasn't the youngest boys and girls so we all flew to india we stayed with we were hosted by different families because back in the days budget was a big thing uh, no money is to stay in hotels so we swam the indian age groups 20 odd us we, we had a fantastic time we, we made a lot of friends uh, till now i'm friends with those as swam at that meet uh, and yeah so there's four of us who actually ended up winning medals and i won a gold um, and a couple of others and so that was my first experience you know you're invited to go and swim at you know so, so the indians come first then we go to the army then the following year was the we called it the south like a south asian games back in the days we had a triangular meet between india sri lanka and bangladesh so every uh, country takes right. turns to host 79 i got into the team with my brother uh, david and we swam the same race and we sh- he, he took gold i took silver that was a fantastic one um i must tell about david you know we were this in joseph's pool that's where the only 50 meter pool in sri lanka so it was our turn to swim the 1500 which is a very long race and we were in front of the blocks and you know uh, i was this 13 year old kid and my brother was missing and they were calling for his name and he is not to be seen and we were worried and then they like almost said look we are going to race without him and then suddenly my brother appears from the change room he had been in the toilet seated and focusing on the race <laughs> he said i thought he had loose motion uh but he was focused <laughs> and he just came out got on the block they start on time just in time jit and um, he took off man the, the gun went off he took off and uh, i struggled to hang on hang on with, you know hang stay with him but uh, thankfully indian struggled to stay with the, the two of us so we shared a gold and silver at that meet and then really? came the other international meet um, you know good time good must times. have been must have, must have been something to swim alongside your brother anyway we have another question coming in from harun maujud does the body structure and size matter to become a swimmer that can be competitive at an olympic stage oh gosh olympics well yeah for sure i mean i remember going to a world championships in 2000 as a coach and i saw i was i was seated alongside the german team and i was like looking at them and thinking are they are they basketball players there's nobody less than 6 foot um size batters for sure but you still have an exception to the rule um of people who are not physically gifted but still doing well in their sports um but the whole thing is you know i think we shouldn't do sport because of the olympics we should do sport because we love to we love sport and that's the reason we all should do and if someone ends up going to the olympics let it be uh, we you know somebody else goes i'll stay back and carry on enjoying the sport back home so yeah size matters uh, our nutrition is a big issue in sri lanka um, we need to eat better the good story is uh, the best boy akalanka who we were coaching um, he um, he went to the asian asian age groups and won gold beating i think the the japanese and chinese were there 
and I swam a fantastic time of 56 seconds on the 100 back broke Hishanu numbers record but a fantastic time but when he came to Sri Lanka I was like Akalanka tell me what are the supplements I was surprised with his time so much so that I said look are you taking any supplements that I'd like to know and this boy said sir supplement amata karanda sama vitamin ne kakot ganne as I got then I looked at his food you know basically he eats a kilo of food for breakfast a kilo at 10 30 for his interval break at school kilo for lunch a kilo for dinner four kilos and I've seen Matthew Kyle Chavantha the best of our swimmers eat like horses we got to put the nutrition in order yeah, yeah. that's the answer to uh, Hopefully, yeah, that answers matter. your question, Harun. Taller you are, the better, you know, more advantageous it is. But, yeah, don't limit yourself to... How tall are you, Julia? How tall are you, Julia? Julian, can you hear me? Sorry, it was breaking up, uh, Lantra. Can you hear me now? Me? I'm still on inches. I have no idea what the centimeter thing is. Um, I am 510. 5 feet 10 inches. Not no inches. 10 in. 5, in, five right. feet 10 inches. Can you hear me now? Right. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So that's just, a, that's just about average of uh, the you? height of a Sri Lankan man. Alright, moving on to five. the... 510. Right. Moving on uh, to the next question. We, we have a request from one of our colleagues. He wants to know. Uh, he wants to know how, what the build-up was towards that uh, Paralympics game that you just mentioned. He he wanted to know how you prepped and what kind of uh, training did you do. Just the build-up well, of that. I am not Paralympics the game. I am not the athlete. Uh, the para athlete is the para games. Uh, the the the, diff- the differently abled. And you know this boy Priya Darshana, he swam a 58 for the 100 ba- 100 freestyle, and he only got 10th in his category. Uh, there's multiple categories depending on your disability. Uh, but um, yeah, this boy basically we train hard. We train very hard. But um, um, just like any other athlete, you know, just have we knew we need to swim a certain time to try and you know be somewhere at the games, and we kept training for that. And we knew just you know it's it's like almost training another kid for a local meet, international. It, it's the same. You yeah. just uh, you just want to be that you know that second faster, and yeah, yeah. that's what you do with any child uh, at any level, uh, to be honest. Uh, but awesome. uh, the Paralympics actually changed my perspective of sport because here they are a united bunch. You have about five thousand differently able athletes, fully blind teams. Wherever you look, they are they are in the village, and that changed my life a lot uh, for the better, obviously. And they they seem to appreciate hum you know the the human race. There is a lot more spirit in those games than if you, when you go to an able games where you there seems to be now you know Olympic athletes. Now I'll give you one small example. At the Sydney Paralympics, uh, I was in the bus and the bus driver said how three weeks before this was the Olympic Games and not a single athlete at the Olympic Games would greet the guy when they get into the bus. At the Paralympics, everybody who gets into the bus will say hello to the bus driver. Right. Now, where do you want to be? <laughs> yeah, that's the difference straight away. Anyway, now it's time to go down the memory lane once again. Julian, just to test how good your memory is, tell us about this picture. What were you winning? Which year was it? And uh, yeah, what did you win? Let's see if you remember. That was, yeah, yeah, I remember. I don't know the year. I don't know how old I was. But that was a two mile sea swim, the Mount Lavinia. Um, uh, right. And uh, you, the hand there is Mrs. Premadas's. Uh, <laughs> she's obviously not featured. Uh, so she turned up because it was our 50th year of celebrating the two mile sea swim. Uh, a fantastic family event. Uh, it's just, uh, and yep, yeah, two mile sea swim, Mount Lavinia. I heard they're filling up the beach at Mount Rivini. I don't know what they're going to do with that two miles you swim now. Yeah. Where are they going to start from? New beach coming up. 
Yes, that's that's a good thing, I suppose. Anyway, so anybody who wanted to know what uh, Julian Bowling's memory would be like, that's how good he is in uh, whatever he remembers and what he went through. So, well, us, if it was, was good, like, uh, uh, I would have I would have done better at my exams, no? no <laughs> it's it's not always the academical part, like you stated earlier. Good things okay, stay so in your head. Julian, definitely. Uh, tell us about the first time you, you you received national colors and you know the m- memories of that. Yeah, like I mentioned, I don't know if it's color. I, that meet that we swam in going to India, I don't think we were given colors. I remember we got a colors is about, ah, you know, you get to wear the blazer and you put this national crest on, which is absolute yeah. pride of any athlete. But we were given Bernard t-shirts. Bernard was this, they're still there at Kohuala, uh, the, the clothing company. They were the only place probably that made t-shirts then. So you're given this t-shirt with the Sri Lankan, like the lion on the t-shirt and we, okay, that could have been our colors. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it, yeah, some people brag about colors. I, I probably didn't think too much about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes when you're when you're included into a team, you're like humbled. Uh, True. And yeah, so but the but the problem in Sri Lanka is that we are now a tour-based country, and if you look at it, everybody is going on tour, 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 and our sports is going downhill. So we we have become a tour, and and officials want to go on tours now. The Olympics will come, and one person will qualify, and twenty officials. So, and then they also wear the crest. They also wear the Sri Lankan crest. And they're walking like they've represented the country. So, the value of our crest has... True, true. Sad agree. to say, yeah. Couldn't agree more, Julian. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Alright, so, uh, another question I know for in you. Rugby, Pro- you play rugby. In, yeah. In rugby, they say the value of wearing that jersey, whether you're playing at school level, where you played for Zahira, it's a jersey, the value of the national jersey. We must value our crest, and but unfortunately, definitely. our authorities are abusing them. Yeah, definitely. Like that saying, you know, play for the crest on your chest and the name at the back will shine. Anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a fan of rugby, man. I know what you talk about. I can't play. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Julian, I want to ask you, if you could go back in time, back to the past, is there one thing you would change? Oh, is there a certain time period that you would go and want to relive once again? If you could go back in time, to any time? Not really. I think I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, I had many downs, more downs than ups, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, I, you know, it taught me so much uh, that I, 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 I really liked the journey that, you know, you went and till today, when you meet up with your colleagues, whether it's school friends or people you competed with, all we talk about is not the events we swam or competed or the exams we sat for, but all the other good times we had. So, yeah, it's a, it's a matter of, you know, that's obviously how life is and uh, time does fly fast. Take yeah, it for granted. Right. Don't take it for granted. This is, this is, <laughs> this is important that we uh, appreciate time. Brilliant, brilliant. But uh, if I were you, I would want to go back to that time where you know you said I was a naughty Julian. I would want to relive that life, just that that phase of my life once again, just for the fun of it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'll tell you a good example of how naughty I was. Um, unless, unless, unless 90- you are still a naughty kid, you never know. <laughs> we are, we are in our own ways, uh, but. <laughs> It was the 82 Asian Games. Now, I went for the Asian Games in India and I got into the finals of the 1500. That's quite a few lengths, like I said, the, the event, the longest event in the pool. So, you swim it this morning, we'll say, and you, the heats and you get in the finals. But the finals are swam the following day afternoon. But in the meantime, I defended this Korean girl, uh, Pang Mi Sun. <laughs> in the English, in English version, it's Park Mi Sun. And, you know, I was like desperate to see her as so, well. So. That evening, <laughs> I went to the, I went to, without going to bed, I went to the discotheque. And hung out with her and I was dancing and years 
come tomorrow is is a big race but i was i was happy on the dance floor and who walks in <laughs> to the dance floor the discotheque at the village in india in delhi was my mother who was a coach caught me oh <laughs> i was like man caught i mean you red handed <laughs> And you know, next day I, I finaled again. I swam a super time, um, and uh, I did well. I was I was sixth. I was still happy. But uh, you know, my mother in her report didn't talk any about anything about my achievements as a coach. She had to write the report. It's all about the, that's one of the things she wrote, and then a couple of other ones. So nothing good was written about me. I was like, Mom, please, even though you complain about <laughs> me, you know, can you just mention that I came to the finals? something like that <laughs> say no 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 <laughs> brilliant brilliant memories uh, julian we have another question coming to you from our, one of our colleague uh, lelu mahakumar uh, isn't julian interested Hi, in administration administration in sport we assume right yeah no i mean i am out of admin i am out of i just so much of corruption and inconsistencies um i've come to a stage in life where now i want to really focus with the fact that i knew that i needed that help and i'm i'm seeking that help of how we become transformational coaches and that is how do we become coaches that put children as priority um there's a there's a course we follow and we are we are discussing how can we change our coaches from becoming transactional based to a transformational who will coach our children young kids to help them become you know men and women sorry that was the wind men and women That's of right. empathy and integrity so i i want to be somewhere where we can change culture and i think that's more important brilliant brilliant uh, all right so i'm going to put on a tough question into your mids if uh, if you could sorry about I that know, technical hitch there's a bit of that's, there's that's a bit okay. of wind coming the south west monsoon right, picking right. up that's all right <laughs> that's all right that's all i i have a bit of a tough for your question out of all your memories that you stated okay? yeah that's brilliant that's brilliant out of all Sorry folks so I will I will hold it like this huh? uh <laughs> that's all right all right so once again out of all those memories you just okay. uh, spoke shared with us tell us one most unforgettable memory just one one unforgettable memory that you you just hold on forever Can you hear me Julian? Um Oh gosh, there's so many good Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to think. You got me on the spot there. Yeah. Uh what can I say? Um not on the mischief side, right? Uh I think um memories Oh gosh, there's so many out there. Um, I think what I spoke about the the um, the para games is when we include the differently abled or even now into our mids. I think you know what we we really hit the button at the in the right place and. Uh, This is about the fact that okay so these are not memories but this is knowing what i experienced in life the fact that we must there's a tagline that we are trying to now study sports for all and play for life now that is you know that's what we all must experience uh the fact that we can all do sports uh, you know our race our economic differences our religions shouldn't divide us 
we must stay united the, the athlete or non athlete we all must have equal chance of doing sport playing sport and hopefully sport is something that doesn't sort of go away when you when you finish your sport because we start in a world of play as kids and suddenly we are brought into this world of organized sport and sometimes we forget the fun part of it and if you can keep that fun element i think we might you know the beauty is that all of us will play for life brilliant brilliant awesome uh all right so we spoke about uh, julian as a kid we spoke about julian as a swimmer international and national now it's time to talk to the julian that is a coach how 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 would you differentiate being an athlete a swimmer yourself and now getting into coaching how different is that well coaching came by default uh, i was working for a multinational locally and uh, geez and i was really struggling for finances um, so i decided to teach some classes in swimming and my brother and i put a small ad and said the bowling brothers that's the only time we advertised <laughs> I'm going to start classes and it was a old holiday in hotel that was consented they were so nice to have us there and we started some classes and oh for I guess some people some children turned up for the classes and that sort of grew in number and then I was like enjoying that situation over what I was going through at work and uh, finances also much better now <laughs> and <laughs> then i made the switch of quitting my job and going into full time coaching and uh, never looked back so but it's it's a huge learning process i have seen loads of my um uh, hold on my arm is hurting holding on to this camera man okay <laughs> uh um yeah so it's a learning process because even as a young coach you always you know it's about our egos and i remember this coach sergio lopez um from the us he's a spaniard who won medals in the 1988 olympics uh he produced three swimmers last year from his high school program in jacksonville to win gold at the last olympics and he said look they, we all feel good when our own athletes do well but it's a fine line between a good ego and a bad ego so at what cost do we train them is it a conditional thing that you know i'll coach you as long as you swim fast or you know what you go through any struggle in life i'll be still there for you so this has been the more recent transformation that you know i'm i'm trying to change and i think we all must try and change is to learn to you know it doesn't matter how good a coach you are if you don't help these kids to become super dads and moms when they get bigger now you i'm going to i'm going to quote this buddy you you i think you will second this your coach at zaira shamli nawaz yeah correct yeah yeah absolute correct. gent absolute gent and a father figure and he and i discuss a lot about you know this type of coaching and he says you know success and he's he's coaching another school unfortunately he had to leave your school and go to another <laughs> so they you know he's, he's such a good guy man such a good coach but he says success is not the how big how good the season was success is 10 years down the road 10 years down the road if these boys now talking on the sport of rugby if these boys yeah. become good fathers good husbands so this uh, we had talk about this relational thing not that we are going to go after this results outcomes yeah. and base success on our outcomes we cannot do that success is when so, there is you know there is there is peace at home yes 100% julian all right so uh, you said that we have to enjoy and bring the fun out of all the sports that we do so on that note shyamali is asking you a question how are we supposed to act when we go into any kind of meet are we supposed to be happy or scared or nervous that's her question okay so as an individual in any sport uh, the little i've read is nervousness is good too much nervousness from is the adrenaline. not good yeah but too much nervousness now you play the game of rugby and back in the days they said rugby players used to hit their head against the wall their fist against the wall and pop themselves up today if you watch some of these uh, top leagues in the world and even the international teams 
they see a lot more relaxed when they go into the field they don't want to get too tense so too nervous not nervous is not good thing the middle line is good so that you put a little bit of nervousness into you can always help you to perform better but you know if your identity is in the outcome that is going to not make many people happy because only one or two people can win and what about the rest so what we do now as co- in coaching is we we started this this year we asked we ask our swimmers what do you want out of the sport that we can help you with and some swimmer is going to say you know sir i'd like to get into the school relay team someone will say sir i want to get into the uh, finals at the age groups or someone will say sir i want to medal at the nationals and then we say okay if that is your dream let's work together and then we try to get the parent in there and this is a new thing we were trying to do now during this lockdown period is get parents to commit themselves to the child's dream so that when the child goes to a meet the child can have fun because 90% of the people do sport because they want to have fun and some of them will do sport and i've seen good athletes with long faces doing very well but uh, with a long face always with the long face okay I so there is an know. exception but majority, majority of us want to do it because we enjoy sport yeah. and another thing we've done is we bring free play because especially with our juniors we have the last 15 minutes of every session is a play time and believe it or not now the problem is uh, they don't get out of the pool now in training if you say training is over they'll be like i'm out of this place i am out now we say you know what here play time now the mother or father yeah. especially the mothers who come to you know most time they can't get their children out of the pool uh and i i think this is what it should be definitely 100% agreeing with you julian uh we're coming yeah. towards the end of the so show, nervousness family, is good yeah go ahead uh all right so i talk if if you if somebody ask you who is julian bowling in a few words just a few limited amount of words how are you going to tell them who julian bowling julian is someone who is now struggling during this lockdown period i can barely see the ocean from here but i'm missing the ocean badly that's me ah uh, on a light note but so yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know um yeah uh, let's 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 try and make a difference in our community this is probably what the lockdown period should also teach us is that we must learn to become more community oriented i'm trying to figure that out and we got to figure that out um and get to know our community and make a change brilliant so that's that's who julian uh bolin is a person who wants to change the community and put in something good into uh, all the sportsmen's minds all right so julian tell us about this achievement well this is another thing very close to my heart no it's not the privilege the fact that we formed the olympians association shriani and darsha worked very hard for this and it is to take care of the welfare of our olympic athletes and mind you uh, lantra we have our great athletes who are in their 70s and 80s still alive who've gone to the olympics so the new breakthrough is through allianz insurance uh, we were able to bring in a insurance policy for our olympic athletes um you know for the forgotten people so it's it's more than the moment of the president being then you know recognizing us the fact that we want to see to the welfare of our past olympians uh and hopefully as olympians we also can contribute something to the sport is the reason we put that together and we made some decent progress and one more beautiful thing we do is uh in this uh um uh, mahesh the hurdler who went to the 1986 he's perera peter right his job is he does a fantastic job and this is the littlest job he takes care of every athlete's birthday he makes sure there is a cake delivered to their homes and mind you a past that Olympian who is in the 60s 70s sadly a cake is brought home with the olympic rings on it so we do those things uh, through this amazing. olympians movement yeah. it's nice all right so we have a we have another fan question for you uh, julian from akila senibiratna sir do you recall your most competitive opponents during school time like mr dinesh uh, sundaralingam of ds 
Dehan Sinivratna and uh, Peter Jasinga from St Thomas. <laughs> I'm pretty sure oh, he remembers the all of them. Akila. <laughs> Pete, Akila is there, Dinesh. I mean, this is the beauty. And it, it wasn't about who won. Because I think we used to all hang out together after the meet. All, the, for all of us from different schools. And... Gosh, so there's nothing competitive. Obviously, when you get on the block, you want to race your hardest. Uh, but boy... Uh, we look forward to times after a meet, maybe. That's another reason why we want to be at a competition. And go and watch a movie, um, have a buriyani or something. Your mother gives you enough, parents give you enough money for that. Um, yeah, so these are the friends you have and, you know, friends you're not going to lose, for sure. Brilliant. Uh, Alright, so I I think we have a small clip of Julian still showing some of his stunts. Uh, being how young he is, let me uh, try to play it if I could. Yeah, that's uh, that's the former Olympian trying to keep himself in shape. Although you know he would still beat anybody. I think beat me even in a swimming meet. Uh, Julian, tell us about this. How you keep uh, your shape in this uh, quarantine time and how you um, uh, practice? If you get into the bottom of the pool and if you can walk. And I swim on top, I might beat you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is a call um, stationary swimming, uh, resistance swimming. We athletes even use this now a lot in, in most sports. And because of the small pool that I have in the background, I attach myself to this um, rubber cord and do a bit of uh, swimming. And uh, hopefully that keeps me fit. Yeah, you're looking in good shape. Uh, although I think this is... Uh... I just want to ask, did you take your phone out of your pocket before you jumped into the pool at that time? Uh, lockdown, I went through three phones in <laughs> the span know, of 10 days. Because huh? <laughs> you're right, <laughs> spot on, man. Somebody's been sneaking to you. Um, yes, I went through three phones because I walk up here and I have the phone in the pocket and I get in and I start swimming and I'm like, ah, I wonder what time it is. I was like, oh, geez, where did I leave my phone? Then while in the water, I put my hand onto the pocket and I can feel this object. Must have been a terrible two feeling. Phones. I went through three phones, but two of them were in the water. <laughs> would the, you, phone, phone, would phone you dealers had, the phone dealers had a good business for me for those lockdown <laughs> days. Well, the first few days. <laughs> would you say that uh, it's your age coming into matter here? <laughs> No, it's the same thing. I back in the okay, so it was the Barcelona Olympics, and I remember I got in the plane to come back to Sri Lanka, and I saw all the other athletes putting their blazers, you know, t stacking them up in the in the, in the holders, and I looked for my blazer, and I was like, oh, oh, I left behind. I left it back in my room. <laughs> I mean, loads of stories like that. I know, brilliant. Uh, so you were talking about rugby earlier. There's a question for you relating to rugby by one of our friends, Dinuk Baskaran. What's your favourite international rugby team? Dinuk, um, I am an English fan. The most arrogant team is un oh, for some reason on, I'm an English Julian. fan. No, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. But, I, 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 <laughs> but I'm also a fan of the Blacks. I'm a fan of South Africa. The chaplain of the South African rugby team when they first won in 95, the Invictus Five. year. Uh, you might recall where Nelson Mandela played a big role. The chaplain of that yeah. team is a good friend of mine, Kasi Karsten. He comes to Sri Lanka. We do a training for fathers, dads at home called The World Needs a Father. But I know what South Africa went through. And when the finals played, you know what? I'm an English fan. I wore my English jersey. But when South Africa started winning, I was like, this is nice. Yeah, the box. We are, uh, now, yeah. you know how they say half of Sri Lanka is Nava Sri Lanka guy. <laughs> Sri Lankans, all of them are. Nava Sri Lanka guy. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> no, uh, but, and the All Blacks, Steve Henson was another coach that I learned a lot from. I've, I've done some reading on him and the fact that he, one quote that he had, he said, look, when they were playing the third test against the British Lions uh, mantra, Steve Henson was interviewed and they had tied the series 1-1 one, one, and they were going into this final and he said we the only thing we are in control is to go and maximize our talents and see what comes out but to make sure we have tools to be a better person from it 
Here's Steve Benson really, yeah. telling the All Blacks, "Hey, buddy, it doesn't yeah. matter how well you play the game. When you go home, be a good father, be a good husband." But if the All Blacks can do that, and also clean the changing rooms, we we try we started doing this in our pool. Uh, our swimmers are now uh, myself. We we get we take the mops and uh, we we clean them, and more so now with the this uh, whole corona virus i'm sure we'll be uh, doing a lot more cleaning once we get back in the pool definitely definitely so i heard so i heard a few barks there i think i think for those of you who don't know but uh, julian bowling hides his yeah, no. his babies he call his babies he has a few of them and he teaches them swimming as well i think we have a clip of that if we could play that quick they're still better swimmers yeah, than least- i am julian <laughs> Uh, Lisa is a bit reluctant to get in the water, but this morning the fellow said I'll get in, and then he goes up and down. He did about six of these lengths. He doesn't want to get off the board. He looks a bit nervous. <laughs> He's such a cute fellow. And there, there was the other guy. Yeah, this one. He is a good swimmer. Ah, these, these are labs. They are amphibious, and something happened where this guy learned to go underwater, and you might see it in a little while, no? Nah? Well edited. Yeah, uh, you can take. <laughs> Look at him take and that turn. That's brilliant. A... I know that's brilliant. Now see, underwater you see an object there, like a dark patch, a small patch. He is yeah, going to yeah, go after right. that. And I timed this. He spent 15 seconds underwater. Ask me to stay 15 seconds underwater today. I won't. So he is now looking for it. This is a Pablo. And there's another lazy right. dog. I don't know if you see him. He's called Chapo. They are the famous Pablo, drug lords. Are you uh, you're a fan of? Yeah, I was just about yes. to say Narcos fan. <laughs> Narcos fan, my 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 nephew Dion. Yeah, he's the guy who gave these two names. So Chapo is El Chapo who was Pablo Escobar's assistant. Yeah. But these are good guys. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. He's still underwater. This is amazing. This is 15 seconds. Yep. It's just amazing how you uh, have these little babies in your life as well. Do you know keep you going every day? You could oh, just man, keep this watching time, uh, him and with keep playing the... with it. Uh, look at this guy. You see the object in his mouth? That's a metal chain that I drop in the pool, and he collects it. Such a good fellow. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. I think you all, you are having the time of your life. <laughs> yeah. I would definitely. Not a bad. I would def. I would definitely want to come there and have a chat with you and just you know jump on in the pool and have come, a, man. one session with Julian Bolt. Come. Yeah, he's got the pool anytime. Membership is free, buddy. Wait for the <laughs> lockdown to <laughs> be open. Yes, yes, I'll keep that in mind. All right, so I have one last question for you. Just one more before we uh, finish this off, wrap this off. So Mother's Day is just around the corner. It's coming on Sunday. If uh, <laughs> if you had uh to say something to your mother if you have one thing to get off your chest and tell about how what a role the mother plays what would it be julian i mean my mom yeah she was just this fantastic like i gave those couple of those examples of when i want to quit at the end of it when the big games on she says no problem never expect never had any expectations in our lives and just let us be provided what they can uh and just loved us no matter what the outcome was and um yeah this is happy mothers day to all the moms to be that you know don't don't love you know, and moms generally do that uh, love children unconditionally and um uh, and i know in the sporting world in the academic world when children don't perform to the expectation of parents they are not happy children now want their grandparents because the grandparent will say look no matter whether you win or lose i'm just happy to see you so that's why children like to have their grandparents at competitions i think if i can give one advice to moms and dads be a grandmother be a grandfather just love <laughs> them unconditionally because children want to enjoy life awesome 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 julian thank you so very much uh, for joining us today Had an amazing time with you. An amazing. I think I learned a lot uh, talking to you Dude. so much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you make it easy, man. So you you're doing a super job. 
go back to the rugby <laughs> field oh i'm going to tell somebody i'm going to tell somebody that <laughs> hopefully hopefully i can do that and i want to dare yeah. you before you uh, before you cut the call keep your phone on the table and go jump to the pool and have a brilliant evening after this call <laughs> It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm going to get the dogs up here and uh, we 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 swim into the sunset. Thank you so much for joining us Julian. Take care. Hope you stay safe uh, and keep all the good work up. Thanks for your time. Thanks for inviting me uh, Mantra. Thank you so much. Take care. Thumbs up to Papade. <laughs> Thank you so much. Everybody right, take guys. care. Stay safe. Uh, stay indoors and uh, we'll see you next week as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the bell icon for our latest content.